In this video we will talk about state reduction techniques. You can see here that we have a state diagram with six states. And what happens if you can go from this to this? And what happens if I tell you that both state diagrams do exactly the same work? When you have less states, you need less memories, hence the circuit is going to be smaller. Now in order to do this, you need something that is called equivalent state. And a state is equivalent to another if two conditions are met. The first is that both of the states produce exactly the same outputs. And of course, the same outputs given the same conditions. Apart from that, they both need to go to the same next state with every combination of inputs. Let's analyze the previous example. Here we have the two diagrams, the large one and the reduced one. And here I'm pointing you which are the equivalent states. In this case, you're seeing that we are making sure that the second condition is true. We have some arrows coming out from state 1, state 2, and state 3. And the same happens with this equivalent state. We have an arrow going out to this. Of course, we also have a condition where we go to state from state 6 to state 1. And we also have this here. So in this particular example, we are making sure that both uh, states, or in this case, three states, have the, next, the same next state for every combination. This example is simplified. So we are not seeing the outputs of this diagram. And that is important because you also have to make sure that the states produce exactly the same outputs in, in those conditions. So there are three techniques to determine the equivalent states and thus reduce the needed number of memories. The three techniques are inspection, partition, and the implication table. The inspection, as its name implies, is that you are able to watch and recognize pattern in a state table. However, this is one of the hardest one because uh, you need to be able to uh, identify just by looking at the state table. The partition, it's a recursive method and this is the one that we're going to see in this video. And of course, this is the most used technique. And the other is the implication table. And basically, you have to make a relationship table between all the states. And this is a more general solution. But of course, this is more time consuming. So let's see an inspection example. Can you see any relationships or any states that might be similar to any other? Remember that the two conditions are that they go to the same next state and that they have the same output. So I can tell you that state B and D, they are equivalent. And the reason they are equivalent is because they produce the same output in the same conditions. You can see that when X is zero, both of them produce an output of zero. And that when X is one, both of them produce an output of one. So they have the same output. But the other condition is that they have to go to the same next state in the same conditions. So when X is one, you can see that both of them go to state A. So they have the same uh, outcome in terms of the next state. However, when x is 0, you see that ones go to b and the other one goes to d. However, b is the same state, so it returns to itself. And d, it also returns to itself. So they're actually, if we combine them, uh, we can make this work because we're going to have the same state and we can say that when x is 0, it returns to itself. So because of this, this table is reduced to the one that you're seeing. Instead of four states, we have three states, and we have exactly the same behavior that we would have with four states. Now let's see the partition example. First of all, you can remember that you have two rules that the same output and the same next state. So first of all, we're gonna have the, same, the first partition. And the first partition is to think of them as if all states were equivalent. So you can see that we have five states from A to E, and we're assuming and, uh, that, that all of them are one state. Uh, that's why we put them in parentheses here. The first thing you need to do with this partition is write the zeta. The zeta is the output. So you need to have all the states to generate the same outputs in order to be equivalent. Here we have one type of output, one zero. Here you have the same type of output, the same type of output, so this means that the first three states, which are A, B, C, they can be one equivalent state because the, those three states generate the same output. The same happens with D and E. 
both of them generate the same output, 0, 1. Here's why this method is called partition, because we're going to partition this uh, first equivalent state into two states. We're going to have a partition here, and we're going to proceed with the, uh, with the next uh, step. So the order would be to split A, B, C, and D, and E, because what I just explained. The next partition is what happens with the next state. Now we have make sure that these two partitions that we have, the A, B, C, and D, and E, they both generate the same output in those inner states. Now we put the next state for each of those uh, individual states, and we're going to see that in every row, for example, in this row here, all those three next states are the same. They don't necessarily have to be the same letter. They have to be included in the same equivalent state. So for example, what I just highlighted, you can see that we have Z, C, and B. And even if they're not the same letters, you can uh, realize that C and B, they both belong to the group that it's grouped by A, B, C. So it's actually the same next state, even if it's not the same letters. However, what happens with this one here, B, E, and E? Now, B, it's in this equivalent state. However, E, it's in this other equivalent state. So that means that we are not going to the same place when X is one for this state. That means that we have to make a partition. We have to partition here because we're not complying with the next, the same next state. So that's what we do because of B and E, we make a partition and we split A and of course the other state would be V and C. So we have the next partition, A, B, C, D, E. We have three states, remember? Uh, we had one state here, we had two states here, then we partitioned and we have three states here. So just to make sure that you understand, we are assuming that all of these are one state, it's one state, then if this is, this is not possible, we go to the next partition. It doesn't necessarily have to be two, it might be partitioned into three or four, and then we go this procedure until we find the least amount of states that fulfill all the conditions. Here, uh, we see that in BC, we have CV. Of course, CV is the same, it's this one here, and both of them, EE, are the same. They are both uh, going to this state. Notice that both rows don't have to go to the same place, just one row. The first row has to go to the same place, the second row has to go to a, the same place. However, we see that on D and E, we have, even if D and E, the first row, it's going to the same place, B and A, they both belong to different states. So we cannot do this, we have to split D and E. And of course, this is our final partition. And we realize that only B and C, this means these two here, these two states are equivalent. So instead of having five states, we can have four states and do the same. Let's see an example. Here we have eight states. We have one input with X being zero and X being one. So if you remember the partition zero is to think of them as one big group. So we're gonna see, we're gonna say that we have the same state being A. Now I'm gonna write Sita, which is the output. Remember, this is the first condition. Sita for x, x equal to zero, and Zita for x equal to one. And we're going to see which of those states generate the same output. So I simply filled all the information. This is for A, it's zero, zero. For B, it's one, zero, zero, zero. And I forgot to put the state H, I'm sorry. So H is one, zero. So now that we have the outputs, we're going to see how many of those states generate the same output. Uh, if you see the different combinations, we have three different outputs. You can either have zero, zero, which is the case, for example, for state A. We can have one, zero, which is the example for state B. And we can have F, the state F, which is one, one. So because we have those three different outputs, we can build our first partition, the partition one. And for the partition one, we're gonna separate the states depending on the output. So first of all, I'm gonna 
uh, assume that all the states that generate 0, 0 are going to go into the same equivalent state. So I'm going to put A. Those three states generate an output of 0, 0 depending on the x. Next, I'm going to put the states that generate 1, 0. So it would be B. And finally, I'm going to put the state that generates 1, 1, which is just one state. Now here's an important part. Since F doesn't have any other state along it, uh, we can say that F is not reduced. It's not possible to reduce F. So we don't have to put all the information about F. We know that F it has to be a lone state. What you want to do after the partition 0, it's instead of putting zeta, you're going to put the next state for x0 and the next state for x1. And you're simply going to put all the information. So I'm going to fill this. When, for example, when I'm state um, at state A, I'm going to have the next state being A and B. For C, it's E and B. For G, it's B and F. And I'm simply going to fill all the information. And I don't have to fill the information for F. Now remember, you have to check that all the next states are exactly the same. So we start by analyzing the first row. And you see that this goes to A, E, and B. So you see that A, it's on the same state, and E and B are on a different state. So because of that, we have to partition A. We have to separate A from this, from this group, and we go to partition number 2. So we have to just separate A. And of course, because we are separating A, we know that we don't have to do anything else with A. And then we are going to assume that C and G are the same state. And let's see the next row. The next row, uh, it's H, C, C, and H. Now, in this row, you are seeing that H, uh, it's the same state. But C, it's another state. So we have to separate or to split B and H. So I'm going to put here B and H and D and E. And of course, F at the end. And F, we know that we don't have to check it. So right now, we have gone from having one big state to having three states to having five states. Again, we're going to have the next state. And now we're going to try to reach to partition number three. And for partition number three, we already know that A remains. And next, we're going to check C and G. Uh, the state C and G goes to E, V. And however, you see that E, V, they both belong to different states. So because of this, we have to partition C and G. We don't have to check them anymore. And we're going to check B and H. B and H goes to H, H and C, C. Of course, there's no need to check anything here because they are the same letters. So that means that B and H, both of the conditions go to the same next states. Then we check D and E. And D and E goes to C, C and D, E. D, E, even if they are not the same letters, they are the same equivalent state. So because D, E, it's the same next state, even if they are not the same letters, we can know that it also complies with this condition. And F, we have already seen that, that is okay. Here we have finished, we have all the states. So instead of having eight states, now you have six states. So you have reduced the state table from eight states to six states. Now, another thing that you have to do is rename the states because you want to build a new state table. So what I like to do is I like to try to make the least changes. So, for example, uh, I would write A being equal to A. Now, notice that I put this little mark here and that tells me that it's a different name. You can put any name you want. You can put X, uh, whatever name you want, as long as you are sure that you're making uh, something different, even if they are the same letters. Then B, I'm going to put the new state B as being B and H. So I'm going to put B, everything time you see a B, H, uh, B or H, you're going to put B uh, with the mark. Then C, it's going to remain the same. Uh, D, I'm going to put D as being D, E. Well, I don't have E, so for E, I'm going to put as being G. 
the previous G is going to become my new E. And finally, the F, well, the F is going to be the same. By doing this, I'm trying to reduce the, the, the different uh, changes. And now you have what you have to do is every time, for example, you here have an H. So instead of putting H, you're going to put B with a mark. Now, instead of putting B, you're going to put also B with the mark. When you find an E, well, instead of putting E, you're going to put D with the mark and so on. And you're going to build a new state table. Thank you very much for watching.